everyone, and welcome back to The Chronic Corner. This episode is going to be a little different. Um, you may have remembered earlier this year I posted a video about tips for finding a job when you have a chronic illness. Now, I posted that video before I had actually most recently um, been looking for a job, and I wanted to share my personal experience, not for pity, not to brag or anything, but just for better understanding, and hopefully people in the chronic illness community can relate, and people can realize that it is more difficult to find a job when you have a chronic illness. Um, so first of all, a little background, I graduated with a bachelor's degree in May um, in marketing and I have a minor in graphic design, so those were kind of the fields that I was looking for. And I started my job hunt back in March and did not find a job until July, which I think is pretty typical in general. Um, however, it was so frustrating, you know, so many people would have thought that the job market would have changed due to COVID and people would be more flexible. Personally, I cannot work early in the morning. My blood pressure is very low and I am just not functional. And I think unless you have a chronic illness or know someone who has POTS that you, you can't really fully grasp this. Um, a lot of times people think that you're lazy and I think my age doesn't help that as well, although that could be applied to anyone. Um, so anyway, from the beginning. So I talked to, over those few months, um, 17 different companies. And within those 17 companies, I had probably, I had first interviews with all of them. Um, I had second interviews with more than half and third interviews with about five of them. Now, some were over the phone, some were Zoom interviews, some were in person. Um, there was a huge variety. Sometimes I talked to HR only. Sometimes I talked to the person that was the head of the department. And I really learned a lot. And personally, I decided not to share about my chronic illness until a second or third interview. Um, I really didn't want them having that in their mind before feeling like I was a good candidate. I wanted them to see me for my talents, my experience, my skills, my personality before they had that in their mind. So what I typically would do is at the second or third interview, depending on how serious I felt this was getting, um, I would tell them, you know, I have a chronic illness. Um, I've had it for about 10 years. That gives me low blood pressure in the morning so I cannot work any time in person before 11 a.m. And I got a lot of mixed reviews, whether it was in person, on the phone, whatever. Usually by the second or third interview, it was in person at that point. Um, and a lot of it, you know, you would think after COVID that things would be, people would be much more understanding to having like a hybrid work schedule and being able to do some from home and some in person. However, they weren't. Um, I had, you know, I talked to companies, restaurants, real estate companies, um, manufacturing companies, every type of business you can think of, and many people just said, no, we can't do that, that we can't accommodate that, and it was incredibly discouraging. I'm not going to lie. I w was really hoping that because I was getting so many interviews, which was an amazing feeling, that it meant, okay, you know, that would give me a better chance at finding a job, but it didn't. I had um, one person not look at me at all for the rest of the interview after I told them that um, and totally ignore me like he was angry that I waited this long to tell them this. Um, I had one HR rep tell me, you know, we can't work with that, that um, he, he was sorry, which I appreciated, but that like that wasn't an option that they needed me here in the morning. I had one company tell me I had to be there to answer phones in the morning for a graphic design and marketing job, um, which, okay, you know, you have to be as courteous as you can, you know, and what do you say to that? I had one woman call me, and um, this was the big one. She told me that it wouldn't be fair to give me a special accommodation to come in later or work from home because she has not let any of her other employees do that. Keep in mind, this company had about 10 employees. <laughs> Um, that they had a mandatory team meeting every morning at 8 a.m. and I could not miss that and it was unfair to give me special treatment. 
And then she goes on to tell me that her previous business, um, when she worked at a different company, that the commute was long, so she just got up earlier to make it there on time, and could I just do that? Now, some of these were harder to take than others, but I think this is pretty common, especially because I looked totally fine. Um, you know, I looked like I do now, and most of the times when I went, I felt good enough to be there because I was pumping myself full of salt and fluids so that I would feel good and looked confident. And so I knew a few people in HR and had talked to them, you know, about discrimination and they had given me advice, advice ahead of time that if a company has 25 employees or more legally that they are supposed to accommodate you, they have to. Um, and even though this didn't happen, I felt like it wasn't worth my time, money, resources to do something about it. Because at the end of the day, I don't want to work at a company that doesn't appreciate me um, and see me as an advantage. I never have had a hard time, you know, missing deadlines or getting things done on time. And I would stress this to people and I would say all the things that I've overcome to show them that I'm hardworking. And, and I would tell them it's not for pity. It's so that they can see what kind of personality I have. Um, but it still, it still wasn't good. And thankfully, I was able to wait for the right fit and I did and it ended up being a freelance job um and now I am a full-time freelance graphic designer which is scary but with my health I think I swear it's the best decision that um I could have made I work for a agency an agency that is local um and I do stuff remotely for them and I now have all different kinds of clients and I have social interactions but I can do it on my hours I highly recommend if you have chronic illness and can work remotely or do some sort of freelance that um, that you look into it because I know for me it was by far the best option. And if I don't feel good, I say, you know, I can't take on more work right now or I get to choose when I work. And if they say, can you do this? I'll say no because I'm, I won't tell them this, but because I'm not feeling good. The other thing is I felt like I had to justify my health to all these companies when I was explaining that I had a chronic illness. And when you're a freelancer, you don't. They don't have to know anything about your health. They just have to know, okay, this is Lauren. This is her talent. This is what she does. And this is her work. And you can make your own opinion about what you think about me without having my health in your mind, which was huge for me. Um, so yeah, that, that was my experience. I, I would definitely say to be prepared to bring up your health if you want to. Again, you don't have to. I, I personally wanted to. Um, I would love to hear anyone else who has experiences like this um, recently during the pandemic or whatever, finding a job with a chronic illness um, and what they ended up doing in the end. So I will put a link below um, for resources for finding a job with chronic illness from Dinette's website. And for more things on all things dysautonomia, visit dinette.org. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I didn't talk your ear off. <laughs>